the place to be on today. And we want to welcome the audience from the Facebook Stay Line. Good to have you with us on this morning, and we're thankful to God for the opportunity to serve you in that capacity. Thank you for those uh, technical workers who, who had the technology and the idea as well as all to bring those things forward that we can have our work for the in the places that we would normally wouldn't be able to go. Amen. We thank God for that opportunity. This morning, we take read, read our text, come from the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and verse 7, the Bible reads, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. He does again. I want to soak in this morning. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, the apostle writes, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that, you may, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, for the context of the background of the passage, we have the apostle, Brother Simon Peter, also called Cephas by Jesus our Lord. He's admonishing or he's warning the Christians against Satan and his tricks, what Paul called the wiles of Satan. See, 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 Satan is the kind of person that he knows what you like. Amen. He knows when he reaches his arm and he takes advantage of those things because he's that kind of a person. You ever know anybody like that? You know, somebody who. Oh, I'm trying to try, try, try to find a scheme. You you wear it from you. somebody who's trying to influence you to do certain things. That's the kind of person Satan is. He does that kind of thing. He worked through evil influence. Now I want to clarify something. Satan does not possess folk today literally. Satan works through evil influences. Sometimes your own mind. So Brother Paul, he told us to, to be to put on the whole arm of God. To be, able to be able to withstand against the wild or the tricks of Satan. You'll find that in Ephesians 6 and verse 11 and 12. Jesus our Lord, he exposed Satan for what he really is. In John the 8th chapter and verse 44, Jesus our Lord told those Jews who are with him, he said, you are your father the devil, and the look of your father you would do. He was in murder from the beginning, and he abode not by the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He started all this mess. All this got started over a lie that Satan told. Amen. Amen. So, 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 to understand that your Satan was an angel. Yeah, he, he was a good one. But he chose to go the wrong way. And you, you know, there is no redemption plan for angels. When they fall, that's it. That's why we are a little better than angels because we got a plan. God got a plan for man, man redemption, but not for angels. When angels fall, that's it. They can't go back to hell. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that God, all that God did, created, in Genesis 131, he said everything was good. But Satan chose to be evil. And you know, the same as men today. Men choose to do evil things. You know, in our text, it's entitled, Do You Think God Doesn't Care? And it's been brought now to the forefront with the coronavirus going all over the globe now. And people dying so in, in record numbers. And sometimes folks go to the far end and say, well, if there's a God, he don't care about what's going on down here. But that's a question that's not new. Folks were saying things like that when wars break out. And so many folks die in wars, they say God don't care. And I, I, we meaning mankind. So, so uh, this this has been brought to the forefront now since the spread of this uh, coronavirus. But today's mentality, we think God don't care. What happened is we we take so much time in our life, focusing in our own little world, and we spend so much time trying to make a living that we lose sight on how to live. Amen. Amen. It goes on every day. And we think because God is silent, he 
he don't care. Well, let's read the text. Let's go back to the, go to the Old Testament and read a little bit about that, about our first parents. In the third chapter of Genesis, and our first parent, Adam and Eve. In the third chapter of Genesis, we have the old story. The Bible reads, verse 4, verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat but every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing both good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both opened, were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Now, all the while this was going on, God remained silent. All the while this was going on, God remained silent. But did that mean he didn't care? Well, see, God could have took the tree out of the garden so it wouldn't be tempted. But he could live it there. He could have extracted the desire from Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit, but he left that there. He could have eradicated Satan from the garden. He left him there, the serpent. But the thing is, he had his word there. The command was there. Amen. He had those things that man has responsibility. See, what folks don't realize about this is mankind's free moral agency. Man is a free moral agent. Amen. He has the ability to choose. Amen. Amen. God's not going to force you. Amen. Man is a free moral agent. Having the ability to choose. God remains silent. That doesn't mean that God didn't care. The responsibility lied upon. I remember talking to people about it. And they were saying that uh, uh, it was an apple. That was a, uh, 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 a forbidden fruit. And some say it was a pear. But well, actually, the Bible never identified it. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, it wasn't an apple on the tree. It was a pear on the ground. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Not P-E-A-R, P-A-I-R. Amen. I believe that what the problem was. But anyway, just because God remains silent does not mean he didn't care. Let's go and get Job. In the book of Job, Papa's story. Many have referred to that many times. In Job chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was, whose Job. Name was Job. And that man was perfect. That man was perfect. And upright. And, upright, and, one, that feared and one that feared God and his you or he shunned evil. Now, this is an example of a good man. Always good to have a good man. And a good woman is like that too, amen. And <laughs> all the five good ones these days. If you got one, you better hang on to them. Amen, church. Amen. But see, actually, this is behind the scenes. As far as God and Satan are concerned, let's drop down to verse number six. The Bible says, Now there was a day when the Son of God came to present himself before the Lord. And Satan came on, came also, God allowed Satan to come as well. This is all behind the scenes. Among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence comest thou? Where do you come from? Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, 
that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is you evil? Then the same answered and answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing or for naught? Has thou not has thou made an has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is, substance is increased in the land. But put put forth thine but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon him put not forth thine hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Now see, this is behind the scenes what's going on. And you know, it says a lot for the content of your character when God calls you by name. When God has confidence in you. We should all strive to be like Job, but God has confidence in us as his servants. He called him by name. God allowed Satan. See, God put a, 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 a limit on Satan's power. Amen. He allowed Satan to deal with Job. And you know the story. Satan killed his kids and his, took all his cattle and his camels and all of that. But Job still did not sin. But Satan had said, take all these from him, he'll curse his face. But Job maintained his integrity. So then came round two, and Job chapter two, and verse fifty through ten, the time say he'll do the very same thing. He says, skin for skin, Satan said. This time, let me go a little further. Says he lost round one, so here's round two. Let me touch Job's own body. God said, you can have that power, but just don't kill it. I'm paraphrasing here. And Satan struck Job with boils that's called Elphimaeus. Boils from the top of his head to the floor of his feet. And yet, Job did not sin or curse God. And when all else fails, Satan is a big dece he does deceiver. But he talked about a womanizer. Satan is a womanizer. He will use women a lot, as men as well, but he will really good at these women. When all else has failed, he'll come miss Job. You still maintain your integrity. Why don't you curse God and die? Hmm. But you notice, she didn't ask, why don't we curse God and die? Why don't you curse God and die? That, and he told you, you sound like a foolish woman. And that ain't rather foolish to curse God and die. You're going to have to curse God and turn around and die and face it. Amen. That, 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 that guy, uh, Oscar Monavia, years ago, he called Muhammad Ali a chicken and then climbed in the ring with it. And I really feel sorry for him. That man, oh, my word. <laughs> and it's just certain thing he just don't do. So, but behind the whole thing, all that's going on in Job's life, as far as Job himself and God talking to him, God remained silent while Job was going through all of that. He remained, but does that mean God didn't care? Too many of us have that same kind of mentality. God remained silent. Let's get Jesus our Lord. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, and verse 1 through 11, let's, go, let's see everybody turn there. We're going to read about this very same thing. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, and verse number 1, the Bible says what? Then was Jesus there to the spirit to the wilderness, to the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, and forty days and forty nights. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter when came the tempter to him, came he said, to him, If thou be the Son of God, command that said, these stones be made bread. If thou be the Son of God. But he answered and said, Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang If thou be the Son of God. What does if imply? Doubt. Doubt. Uncertainty. Not that 
Christ got it, but this is Satan we're trying to attack him. I want to see if you got enough wherewithal to test me. If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. He said, He said, Any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, round three now. The devil taketh him into an exceedingly hot mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, All these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and went unto him. See what Satan does? He always comes back for a round two or a round three. But the way the, 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 our Lord did, did defeated Satan, it is written. It is written. It is, amen, church. Amen. That's why he did defeated Satan. But, but all the while that was going on, God in heaven remained silent. Does that mean he didn't care? Hmm. Many of us will have the same kind of mentality because bad things take place in life. We think God don't care. Yes, God cares. Of course he cares. In our text, the Son Peter tells us he cares for you. But let's find another case. In the 15th chapter of Matthew, we're going to start reading around verse 21. And let's see about the care that God has for all of mankind, if he cares or not. The South Asian woman, in Matthew 15 and verse 21, the Bible reads, And Jesus went in and went and into the coast of the coast of Sidon. Tired and Sidon, uh huh? And behold, a woman of Canaan came. Of Canaan. Now, see, Matthew called her a Canaanite woman. Mark tells you what kind of woman she was, a South Phoenician. Go ahead. A woman uh -huh. of Canaan came out of the, south, the same coast. The same coast. You know what I'm saying? Saying, Have mercy on me. Have Lord, mercy on me, Lord. Son of David. Mm -hmm. My daughter's grievous vexed with their devil. My daughter is vexed with the devil. He said, Go ahead. But he answered her, Not a word. He, his disciples. Notice, said, he answered her, Not a word. He remained silent. Go ahead. And came to the south. Came to the south. Send her away. He said, Send her away. She cried after us. She did what? Cried after us. She cried after us. But he answered and said, He answered and said, I am not sent, but I am not sent, but to the house of Israel. Now, it, it, in other words, I'm only sent. My mission, first, my first priority is the lost of Israel. This one was Gentile. We don't. Then came she and what she came and said, Lord, help, help, me. Lord help me. But he answered and said, He answered and said, It is not me to take the It is not good bread. to take the bread. Cast it to the dog. To it take the bread to the jury. Uh -huh. the children's bread and cast it to the Now, I'm glad this was an American woman. You're going to call me a dog? You can do nothing for me. Tell me, you know, I'm glad it was an American woman. She took it really literally. <laughs> Amen. We don't. And she said true. She said true. Lord, yet the dogs yet the do eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Now, that, that's good enough. But the, uh, uh, the point was, he first gave the impression by remaining silent. Did that mean he didn't care? Hmm. It was the greater good he was going for because of the faith she had. She had more faith than some of his own people. Some Jews, he, she, she had, had more faith than they had. Amen. It was for the greater good, not that he didn't care. Amen. The greater good. You know, as we look at what's going on, the greater good, I have a challenge. I have a challenge for all the sickness and all the death and all the folks affected with the 
a coronavirus for the greater good. Where are all the fake healers? Now it's time to come out. Amen. For the greater good. You know how many folk can be helped if you have the power you claim you have? Amen. To lay hands on folk and heal them. This coronavirus being as dead as it is, now it's time. Amen. For the greater good. Amen, church. Amen. It bothers me when people are being deceived. There are some folk who are living deceived. They're going to die deceived. They're going to stand before God the last day yet being deceived. Amen. But now it's time for the greater good. Amen. Amen. See, God, for the greater good, in spite of what we go through in life, He won't let uh, he won't allow us to be tempted above those things. We can stand. God know how far you can go. But for the greater good, we endure these things. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. What Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. What Paul says. There is no temptation taken. He says, there is no temptation taken. You but such as but was such as was man. common something that you like. Something that's common to man. But Read. God is faithful. But God, for the greater good, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted. He will not he suffer you to be tempted above which you are able. Read. But with, but with, but with the temptation. The temptation also make a way to escape. He provides a way for you to escape. Yeah. Well, what, Brother Robbins, what is that way to escape? It is written. Amen. It is written. That's the way to escape. What does the Bible say about these things? Amen. That's where it's at. Too many folk turn to every other way besides turning to the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God will give you the avenue to escape. Get above these things because it is written. Amen. Let's see how, how Brother James says it. Let's go to James chapter 1. In James chapter 1 and verse number 12. You know, it sounds like Brother Paul saying the same thing, doesn't it? In James chapter 1 and verse 12, Brother James says what? Blessed is the man, Blessed is the man and do and do temptation. Uh -huh. For when he is tried, he, is tried, he shall receive, he shall crown, receive of a crown of life. The Lord, which the Lord, Lord has promised to them that love him. Let, read. Let no man say, Let no when, man he say tempted, when he is tempted, I am tempted, I am tempted, of, tempted God, of God. For God cannot, for God be, tempted cannot be tempted with evil. Not to tempt, not to tempt any, man. any man. But every man is tempted. Get this now. He said, but every man is tempted. When he is drawn he's away, drawn away, away his own lust. That's the same thing. Like, that's the same brother Paul said. He's drawn away of his own lust. And in time. And in time. Then when lust then has when conceived, lust conceived, it brings forth it brings sin. For sin. And, and sin, sin, when it's finished, it, it brings bring forth that time, man. That's how it works. It's your own influences. <laughs> Satan works through influences. It's something that's common to you. Satan knows what you like. Amen. Amen. See, Satan can't tempt you with something you don't like. Amen. See, if you don't drink alcoholic beverages, Satan can't tempt you with alcohol. Amen, church. If you don't, if you don't drink, however, you, you could be. You got a question. I mean, yes, sir. Come on with your question. Um, it says, who is James referring to? Mankind. James referred to all mankind. Just like Adam, our, our first parents, that's the very same thing. Satan knows what you like. When he, when he, when he, he knows that Eve said to desire to, to eat that tree, he enticed it for. And thank you for the question. I have, some, I have one that was written in. I got a question here that came in. It says, what do the Bible say about a wedding? Do you have to, do you have to have a big ceremony and a wedding ring. The Bible speaks of wedding all the time. But as far as having a wedding ceremony, you don't have to have that. When you read in the Bible, 
understand the way of life at the time. They always had wedding ceremonies. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 4, that marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is, is an honorable estate. Amen. In the church. Amen. Amen. Honorable. But we're talking here now about wedding ceremonies. You can have a, 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 a wedding without having a ceremony. Amen. Kind of hard to separate those. But as far as getting married, it's easy to get married, isn't it? Mm. You go to the courthouse if you want to. But there's no ceremony there. But you, it, was a, it was a celebration of life. One will have to not have a ring. The ring is just symbolic. Amen. Those are symbols of the marriage. You don't have to have a ring. I don't wear a ring. Only because I keep breaking them. That's just, <laughs> that's just my stuff. Very fine. But you know, it's a token, a symbol. But just because you don't wear a ring doesn't lessen your idea of being married. You're still a married man whether you, wear, whether you wear a ring or not. Amen. Yes. The Bible speaks of weddings all the time. It's good. It is good. God said, way back in Genesis, the second chapter and verse 18, of all that God created, he said it was good, except one thing. In Genesis 2, 18, the Bible says what? Lord God said, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. It is not good that the man should be alone. I mean, can help me. See, everything God made was good except one thing that the man was alone. He made a help me for it. Yes, marriage is honorable in all. I'm going to stay, but you don't have to have a, a wedding ceremony. You don't have to. And some people are just too poor to even have one. Just to have each other was good enough. Kind of like my, my, me and my wife, we took that married. We didn't have anything for each other. <laughs> Amen. And so far, it's been 37 years. <laughs> Amen. You have to have, have a, a ceremony, but it's good to get married, though. Amen. Amen. See, Christianity is a family religion. It, it's about the family. Everybody has roles in the family. And it seems like we, we, we in this country, the American system is trying to tear down the American family. Let's put God back in our lives. Put the word of God in your life. It'll make you a better husband, a better son, a better, a better wife, children. Yes, put God first in your life. But we'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, as far as the greater good, that's why God remains silent to bring out the best good in you. It's not that God doesn't care. Yes, he cares. Amen. But it's the greater good God wants to bring out of you. Amen. See, being a good man by himself is okay. But it's better if you're a good man in Christ. That brings out the greater good of mankind. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at this being good a little bit more. In Romans 6. Romans 6. And verse 16, Brother Paul says, Know ye not that to whom you use your servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. He says, Whether of sin unto death, or what? Obedience unto righteousness. He says, But God be thanked that you were the servant of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which delivered you, being dead made free from sin, you became the servant of sin. Sin can only affect you when you yield to it. Amen. Don't yield to it. Amen. For the greater good of yourself, yield to righteousness, which is only found by way of the gospel. The Amen. greater good. Let's grab this strong man now. In Matthew, the 12th chapter, look at verse 29. Because Jesus our Lord says something that's very important about how to deal with Satan. In Matthew 12th chapter and verse 29, the Bible says what? Or else can one enter to a strong man's, man's house and spoil his, and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man. And then he will do what? Spoil his house. Spoil his house. Now, what does that mean, Brother Robin? He's talking about Satan. He's talking about 
himself coming down to Satan's domain, Satan's house. Satan is that strong man. But let's, let's just find the full fulfillment of it. Go to Revelation. In Revelation, 20th chapter, verses 1 through 3, we're going to read about this strong man. Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 1, the Bible reads, and I saw an angel come down angel. from heaven. This angel is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Uh -huh. Having the keys of the bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand. And a, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold, he laid on, hold dragon, on that dragon. That old serpent. That old serpent which is was also the Satan, devil and, and Satan. And, and he bowed him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit. And shut him in. And set a seal upon him. That he should get this now. That no he more. should deceive the nations no more. What does, that, that's good. what does that mean? You see, Satan is that strong man. Christ came to Satan's domain and bound him up. Why did he bound him up? He bound him up. That great chain, that's the gospel. The same God he used to bind up Satan, it freed mankind from the power of sin and death for the greater good. Amen. That's why he died on the cross. You see, all the while he went through that mock trial with Pilate and Herod and back and forth all night long and beat me, took all that. He didn't have to do that. But for the greater good of mankind, what did God say all that time he went through that? What did God say from heaven? Nothing. Nothing. God remains to see his only begotten son go through all of that a mock trial a beating and then spat upon him and did all but put a crown of thorns on his head put nails in his hands and his feet and all the while that took place God in heaven remained silent does that mean that God didn't care it was for the greater good of mankind I remember back in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus our Lord and Peter got excited again and pulled his sword out and started to fight and he went for, the, went for Malchus, the high priest servant. He went for his head and he ducked and he got his ear. <laughs> and Jesus our Lord said, put your sword back in his place. You know, in other words, it's not that kind of party. He said, if I wanted to, I could call on God. He could send down a whole legion of angels. I'm talking about 72,000 angels. He said, but if I did that, how should the scripture be fulfilled? Amen. Ain't nobody else coming. But for the greater good, God remained silent. While he went through my practice, Jesus went through all of that, he remained silent. Does that mean God didn't care? Yes, he cared. Peter, Peter the apostle, he tell us, that Satan, he's like a war, he's still like a roaring lion, going to and fro in the earth, trying to seek those whom he shall to devour. But does that mean, just because Satan roams around to destroy people, does that mean that God don't care? No, he doesn't mean that. For the greater good, he has a word here. Amen. It's that logos, the word. God is so powerful just by saying the word. That's Christ Jesus. In the beginning, he had dealt with him, Jesus our Lord, in another form, in the form of the word, the spoken word. Now we have the word in written form. That all men might have access to it. Yes, God, he cares for us. So it's about all we go through in life, and all the plagues, and all the pestilence, and all the pestilence going on in the world, and all the violence, and all the wars breaking out, and all these things going on in, in the world. God still cares. Amen. He still put power in the gospel. It's the gospel to change people's mind for the greater good. Amen. God don't people have to change what we're doing more. It's been my kind of book. Those folks saying that God talked to them and said God said this to me, they are lying. Yes, I know this thing lying, and I'm saying that they're lying. God already said everything you got to say. It's been my kind of book. Amen. Just turn to the book and find what God said. The power to save for the greater good 
for the greater good of mankind. The greater good the gospel. The gospel's intent is to change man's way of thinking. Yielding to the power of God. What's the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ are according to the scripture. You just hear the gospel. Believe what you have heard. Repent of one's sins. Confess back before men. And be baptized in the Lord of the sin. And the Lord will then add you to his church. Live right and die right. Heaven be your home. For the greater good, all of us, all of mankind can be saved by way of the gospel. But you've got to humble yourself. As Brother James has said, you've got to humble yourself before God. Humble yourself. Too many people. Yes, that's a question. Turn your Bible to the Gospel of John. The question is, where did it say that God has stopped talking to mankind, literally? Well, let's go to the Bible. This is really what John tells us. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, <coughs> we'll start reading verse 1, and the Bible says, in the, in the beginning, the word. Let, 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 let's slow it down, make sure everybody get this. In the beginning was, was the word. that's that logos, that, 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 that is the word, what it means. In the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the with, word was God. with God, and the word, and the word was, was God. The and same was in the beginning with, with God. Uh -huh. All things All were made, were made him, by him, and without him, him not anything made that was made. made. Uh -huh. In him was in light, him was light, and life and was light, light of light light me. Uh -huh. And the light and shined light in the darkness, and the darkness, and the darkness comprehended now, the now, we got that, now, we got that part right. Now, Hebrews chapter 1. I'm okay to get the first thing that used to. All right, in, 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 now, in Hebrew chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says what? God, God is the son of time. Now, he, he meant God in different segments of time. And God, who in son of time, and, and God, God was made to spake in time, time past past to the fall of body of Christ. Had, hear this now, had in, in the last days day spoken unto us right. by his, that's how God speaks, through Christ Jesus, he spoke to the whole Holy Spirit to the apostles and they wrote the word down. That's how God speaks now. Amen. And I got, I got everybody to challenge it. Come, come on out and we'll deal with it. God speaks now through his word. Amen. Amen. The folk go on saying that God talked to them, they are lying. Yes, they are lying. God speaks through his word. Amen. Amen. And God not going to take you any other way except by way of the gospel. One size fits all. Folks talking about God saved them in the tree when they were under the tree at night. God saved them while they slept. They are lying. God, God is no respect to a person. He saved everybody the same way, by way of the gospel. Amen. Amen. That's the one plan. For all mankind. What's the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ according to the scriptures. Man must hear the gospel. Believe what he has heard. Repent of one's sin. Confess that for me and be baptized in the Lord. Mr. C. And the Lord then adds you to his church. Amen. That's the plan for all mankind. I don't care if you're in Timbuktu. I don't care if you're in Brookshire or in Africa or, 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 or Herzegovina or anywhere on the planet. The gospel is meant to save the soul of mankind. If you hear me to come, we bid you to come right now and we're all to the scene. God bless you. Wash away my sins. <laughs>